Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close, I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value payment, giving value's contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we gain no value to hate it. Now they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. All right, all right, all right. Episode 227 with the uh, man, the myth, the legend, Dennis Prager. If you don't know who he is, whatever you do, go study this man, his philosophies, his teachings. If you do know who he is, you must be fired up about today's podcast. Dennis, thank you for coming on. It's always good to be with you, and this is the first time I'm in your studio. Yes. You've been to my home. Yes, I've been to your home, and I remember... Uh, when uh, uh, I I had a show with KKLA, I want to say, uh, Saving America. You were on KRLA. Obviously, you ran the whole thing. You were there all the time. I came in one time and met you 2010. Mm-hmm. They said, that's the great Dennis Prager. They said you know, that? The great Dennis Prager. Whew. Yes. Well, they're paid I, to say it. Have you lived I, up to it, though? That's the thing. Have you lived up to it the last 13 years? Uh, uh, only others can judge that. <laughs> but I aspire <clears throat> to doing good things since high school. I, I wrote in my high school diary, and yeah. this will sound corny, but I'll, I'll risk it. I know exactly what I want to do with my life, influence people to the good. How did you know that that early on? There is no answer to that question. I, uh, I, but I learned something interesting from my older son when he was about 18, 19 years old. And he said to me, he said, Dad, you have to understand you, were, you are very lucky. And I, and I said, I know I am, but what are you referring to? He said, you knew so at such a young age what you wanted to do with your life. He said, most people don't. And it was, it's one of the great things of having children. It, it roots you in reality. And I realized, wow, I don't know why I, I, I knew that at such a young age. But I, I'm living out what I wrote in my diary. Dennis, I hope how do you I not, am. How do you not know that, though? Like, you couldn't say, like, a person you saw speak or a speaker no, no, or a was, book no, or a nothing? Was, the only thing I can tell you is I always hated evil. Uh, I, I I am the living embodiment of my favorite biblical verse, those of you who love God must hate evil. I love it because if you don't hate evil, you don't love God. And a lot of believers in God need to need to hear that. It's it's so I I always hated evil and I I I realized in high school that I could touch people. Uh, not in some mystical sense, but I, I could touch their mind or their heart, that I had a gift of clarity. Uh, I'll, I mean, since you're asking, I feel funny talking about me, but I guess I'm your guest. It's, it's somewhat <laughs> expected. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's actually cute and f- almost funny. So my father was a CPA, a certified public accountant, and he... We lived in Brooklyn, New York. He had his office in Manhattan. But on Sundays, he worked at home in his home office in the ba- a finished basement we had in Brooklyn. And some of his clients, you know, middle-aged men, would come an hour early to talk to me. So I said to one of them, I don't understand. Why do you I'm, – I'm 15 – why do you come to talk to me? Mm. And the guy just looked at me and said, you're very interesting. And you don't know, there's really no way to know yourself without input from others because yeah. others are a mirror. You, you, how do you know what you look like? You can't just do it by feeling your face. So old soul type of a thing? Yes. Or was it I, more I, philosophies, yeah, ideas? It, both, both of them. Got it. But I was I was an old soul in a very kid like personality, huh. which that also has never left me. Is there videos of you at that age or no? No, no, because there was there were no video. I, I wish, believe me, uh, I, I, there, there were there were a handful of pictures. So your dad never went on Instagram and recorded anything <laughs> of you. That's a fair. How disappointing! That is a fair statement. How disappointing! Yes, correct. But but were you were you a guy that? Uh, when you, as an old soul, I'm assuming it's very hard to date younger girls. You were dating oh, women you, you, older than you, or no? no. Uh, I, I I always women my age, but you're entirely right. 
for uh, that was a something I almost gave up on in my twenties. I didn't marry till thirty two, and and this is no knock on 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 the women of my age, but okay. So I'll tell you this: you'll love the story. So I, I was at a bar. I don't even drink, but I was at, at some bar. And for whatever reason, and it was a, a cute girl, and I, you know, I chatted her up, as the Brits say, and I, I, I felt I was making some progress. And then I really thought I was going to make progress. She says, "What do you do?" And I said, "Oh, I go around the country giving lectures," which I thought at 25 is pretty damn impressive, right? And she goes, "Naturally, what do you speak on?" And. <laughs> When I tell you what I answered, I'm laughing at me. <laughs> I said, ethical monotheism. Very sexy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was, it's like the anti-very sexy. There's very <laughs> sexy here, and in the book of opposites is ethical monotheism. Yeah. So that it was the last time I actually said ethical monotheism. Well, to the, to, the, to the type of girls that like big words, that could have really gone in the uh, right well, direction. Yeah, but well, apparently she did not. Yeah, apparently she did not. Yeah. She probably thought, as one woman did, I, I, another one, well, this was a middle-aged woman, I wasn't trying to pick her up, but I was flying to a speech, I think it was Kentucky actually, and she said, oh, what brings you to uh, Louisville? And I go, I'm giving a speech. She says, oh, oh, on what? And I said, monotheism. Because I, I dropped the ethical. And she goes, oh, let me tell you about my rheumatism. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was not a successful Prager. Uh, answer. Yeah. Did you play it up? Because one time I'm telling this girl at a club in, in Nashville, Tennessee, and she says, so, you know, what nationality are you? I said, uh, I'm a Syrian. She said, oh, you're Sicilian. <laughs> I said, honestly, moving forward, I'm sick of explaining what Assyrians are. I said, you're right. I am Sicilian. It's oh, a lot easier. Is funny. So it's a, yes, I should have I became said, Vinny. Right. I'm a doctor. Tell me about your rheumatism. <laughs> you're right. Your I, should have, I should have followed <laughs> your uh, pattern. You should have played the game. Anyway, yeah. so here's what I want to do with the limited time that we got here today. I got a few topics I want to go through with right. you. One is Kanye with what happened with them. I'm curious. Obviously, it's nothing that's relevant today, but I want to know how – uh, you viewed what he said, some of the criticism that he had, and you know what caused him to lose his brand, the billions of dollars. Tate, an aspect of Tate I want to talk to you about. Uh, there was, I don't know if you saw it, this one guy, named, it's just a regular guy named Joe, he was driving his Corvette, he was backing up into his garage, and they found some declassified documents in his garage. We're going to talk about this guy named Joe, uh -huh. if you're following his story or uh -huh. not. He, be, he, he had a pretty important job. And then uh, a couple other things that we have is around uh, fatherlessness stats. So I would like to start off with... Uh, By the uh, way, I have no thoughts on the Tate issue. I'll tell you in advance. I uh, it's, it's actually not a Tate question. Oh, okay. It's not a Tate no, question. No, by the it way, is, just let me explain why, because just so people have a better sense. I, I don't find um, the people who are in the news for two weeks interesting. I have never followed the most popular issue of the day, almost never, uh, not on my f in 40 years of broadcasting. I'm the big picture guy, and, and people get caught up. For example, uh, uh, you know, uh, Har Harry and Meghan, I've devoted about 10 minutes to them, uh, and all, of, all 10 negative. <laughs> I, I thought you watched the whole documentary I, so and you followed it all. I'm un unimpressed with that couple. Yeah. To badmouth your family, forget whether they're the royals, just to go to the world to badmouth your family? I mean, who doesn't have issues with family? But to, to use them uh, uh, as, as some sort of prop to, to make an impression and, make, and sell a vast number of books, th th these are, they strike me as just empty children. I feel bad for the royal family, I mean, you know, uh, to be honest. His brother has class. I love class. I love I love dignity. He it's like one brother has dignity and one brother has no dignity. Anyway, I got that out of my system. And by the way, just out of curiosity, how much of that is on him of uh, them embarrassing the family? How much of them is on the wife? You know, you know the whole the, thing that, that that's unknowable. But you know, uh, if it's to the extent that it's on the wife, doesn't speak much for his strength as a man. I agree. One of the definitions of masculinity is to be not intimidated by women. 
That's mm. that's a I, I I hold that to be a defining element. That doesn't mean God forbid you mistreat women. Uh, that, that one has nothing to do with the other, and I mean God forbid you. But but to be intimidated by women means you're not masculine. How did you learn that? That's a great question. How did I learn that? Like that's well, not in a book somewhere. That's no, no, you must I, have I learned okay, by your so experience. Back back here, I feel funny, but back to my, me and and my brain. Uh, I. I'm an observer of the human condition. One of the aims I had, I had so many aims in all well, as a kid. One of them was to understand life. If you, if you had to give one word to a, say what I do, I explain. I try to explain life to people. I try to explain why America is in the terrible position that it is today, the freest country in the world half of whose citizens don't value free speech, the most important freedom of all. I, I always ask why. And people use terms like masculine, and I value masculinity and femininity, and I believe there are only two sexes. No, 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 I take that back. I know there are only two sexes. I fell into a trap saying I believe there are only two sexes. We got gotcha. you. I got me. <laughs> so you're, you're a he, he, him? I, I am, uh, <laughs> but but it wasn't assigned. It was well, assigned to me by nature, by biology, and by God, in whatever order you wish to choose. Dennis, l l let me go back to something you said. You know, we'll get into this stats here in a minute. And Rob, I know I got to do the spon I do. I'll do the sponsorship in about five minutes. But uh, you said something earlier. You said ever since I was a kid, I wanted to fight evil. You can stay on that link, uh, so I can remember it. You said ever since I was a kid, I wanted to fight evil. Is right, what you said, that's right? Correct. Okay, so. You know, evil, uh, if you're 15, you know, that's a few decades ago. How different was evil then than it is today? So evil then is what year? That's what, what year were you 15? So I was, it was the late 60s. Okay, so late 60s. What was evil in the late 60s? And what have you seen the evolution of evil from then to today? E evil is, is fairly consistent. Communism is evil. Nazism is evil. Uh, Isla Islamism, not Islam, Islamism is evil, where you deliberately hurt other human beings uh, is evil. I, it, it, I've never found that a complex subject. And uh, if people are not clear that the three things I mentioned are evil, there is something wrong with their moral compass. It's broken. I mean, if you can't acknowledge how evil, but the truth is the Ignorance, I'll, I'll tell you, the, there's only one difference to answer your question between then and now. You say to a kid in high school, uh, Auschwitz or Gulag, he doesn't know what the hell you're talking about. That's really, that borders on evil. Not to teach young people about the greatest evils just of the last century and to a great extent of all of history, Gulag and Auschwitz. Uh, is a crime. They know preferred pronouns. They're taught to be basically idiots. That's that's what, look, non-impressive people are teaching people to be non-impressive. That is the state of American education in one sentence. Non-impressive people are teaching people to be non-impressive. Yes. So so you're saying evil's been evil for, for the last however for, many, for, since, forever. Since, the, since humans. Well, but let me ask you this. Let me, let me, uh, maybe I want to get a little bit, extract a little bit more out of you on this topic. So uh, you know how like this new chat GPT comes out. Oh my God, look what it's doing. People are using it as customer service, but it's only 1.0. Wait till 2.0, 3.0, 5.0, 7.0, or iOS. I don't know what version we're on right now, 16 or 15A. Mm -hmm. The new operating system is 16.0. It's better than what it was at 8.0, 3.0. Is the evil 49.0 today, has it evolved into even stronger ways to divide, to manipulate, to pin of parents against kids, husbands against wives, men against women? Has it evolved to be stronger today, or has the strength been the same forever? Men have gotten weaker. Th there are new, f relatively new phenomena. The general evil is is the same evil uh, as it's always been. Um, what the Chinese Communist Party and the North Korean Communist Party does to its people, uh, what Putin is doing in Ukraine. I mean, the, these are tr these are evils. Totalitarianism is a modern evil. 
you need mass communication and mass police and mass technology to have totalitarianism. But otherwise, but what you what is new in America uh, is uh, for uh, I'll give you a relatively new evil: the vast number of adult children who do not speak to parents because they differ with the parents' conservatism. This is new. We we uh, it, it was unheard of in the past that you stop talking to your parent because of how they voted. And I consider that evil. That's what I mean, new evil. That's, that, new that's evil. a new okay. evil. That what is what a new else evil. is new evil? Mm, well, in, in America, this is not a new evil in the world, but in America, the suppression of free speech, the amount of censorship is, is brand new. America, L, Woodrow Wilson flirted with it, but outside of the Woodrow Wilson era, we have never had a suppression of free speech. That was the one thing every every American agreed with. 45% of young Americans, according to Pew, which I tend to trust, say the following. Uh, I believe in free speech except for hate speech. And they don't realize, because they, they've not been taught to think logically, they don't realize that that's an oxymoron. It's a self-contradictory statement. If you don't believe in free speech for hate speech, you don't believe in free speech. What do you believe in free speech for? Only speech you agree with. Everything else is hate speech. This is what the left has taught them. And the left has never, from Vladimir Lenin to Columbia University, the left has never allowed dissent. And there's a reason. If there's dissent, there's no left. If there's dissent, there's no left. Correct. They cannot, that's why they shut down conservative speakers. Four years of left-wing indoctrination at the average university is not enough. They know one conservative, eloquent speaker in, in an hour and a half can undo four years of the lies that they're told of America being systemically racist, of, of, their no, of there being more than two sexes, et cetera. That's why they don't want us on their campus. Conservatives never gave a damn if a liberal came to a campus. They, they invited them. Jerry Falwell invited Ted Kennedy to, to uh, Liberty University. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, he, I am a conservative. I ache to have, I have offered money <laughs> to any left-wing New York Times columnist, which means any one of the 99% who are left-wing, to debate. I, I've offered $10,000 plus any money that they would raise at, 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 for admission. And they could pick the venue. They could pick uh, the moderator. And I would still do it. They don't do it. They don't debate. They smear. Uh, about a six herb. Sexist, intolerant, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, racist, bigoted. I had to make an acronym because it's a lot of terms. What was that again, that acronym? Sexist, six herb. S-I-X-H-I-R-B. Break it down again? Sexist, intolerant, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, racist, bigoted. Name calling. That's all they do because they, they can't debate. They can't stand up and tell you there are more than two sexes. Are there more than two sexes in kangaroos, in penguins? But all of a sudden you reach the human species and there are more than two sexes? 56 if you sign up for Facebook? 56? Oh, we're living in the age of the absurd, of the total absurd. And by the way, I have a, a reason for that. Secularism. The post Judeo-Christian world produces only idiocy. No religious person says there are more than two sexes. The only people who say there are more than two sexes, the only people who say men give birth are secular. Secularism produces morons. Not every secular person is a moron, of course not, but every secular institution is moronic. And the most secular institution is the university, and that's where all the moronic ideas originate. How do they keep making so much advancement? How, how, how are, uh, you know, concepts that literally make no sense create this kind of momentum? Uh, there was an answer given by G.K. Chesterton, or it's a, a, at least attributed to him, late 19th century, early 20th century British thinker. When people stop believing in God, they don't believe in nothing. They believe in anything. Hmm. That's the answer to your question. People don't, even secular conservatives don't agree with me. 
they think secularism is, 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 is a blessing. It's only a blessing in government. It is not a blessing in society. Separation of church and state you're referring to, I assume. Basically, yeah. yeah. Let me do this before we get into this topic about uh, fatherlessness homes. Folks, uh, if you've been following uh, the, the sponsorships lately, we have teamed up with Gold Co., this took a couple of years for us to decide to do this with what's going on today in the economy being the fact that it's strange times. I'm talking to my Morgan Stanley guys or my Goldman Sachs guys. Both sides, no matter who you talk to, are not too confident about what's going to happen in 2023. I myself for years have always had physical gold stored in different places just to hedge. This is not 50% of your portfolio or 25% of your portfolio, but a small percentage of your portfolio that you ought to consider having some gold in. The company that we decided to team up with is Gold Code. They've been a six-time Inc. 5000 winner, 2022 company of the year, thousands of five-star reviews and over a billion dollars in gold and silver placed. Value teaming viewers can get up to $10,000 in free silver and a free ounce of silver. Ronald Reagan coin with a qualified order. Call them today. At 855-594-2758. Again, 855-594-2758. Or go to goldco.com forward slash PBD. Once again, goldco.com forward slash PBD. The link's going to be in the description and in the chat. So here's a question for you for fatherlessness stats. I saw this the other day, and I speak on this a lot, and I think a part of what's going on today with the momentum of Tate and with the momentum of you know, what you've been speaking about with Prager University on the role, family nucleus, you're seeing this being talked about everywhere. I see the stat, and I want to know how we got here and how we need to fix this. Okay, so here are the stats. The U.S. has the highest rate of children living in single-parent households of any nation. About 80% of single-parent homes are led by single mothers. At a rate of 20%, 23% of children living with one parent and no other adult, the United States is three times the world average of 7%. So 23% is U.S., 7% is world average, China's 3%, India's 4%, okay, where a mom isn't there or a dad isn't there. Even for children with a father present in the home, the average school age boy only spends about 30 minutes per week in one-on-one conversations with his father. For comparison, the same boy on average will spend about 44 hours per week watching television, playing video games, and surfing the internet. 90% of all homelessness and runaway children, 63% of teen suicides, 85% of children and teens with behavioral disorders come from fatherless homes. Fatherlessness, likewise, has a direct link to teen pregnancy and sexual activity. Roughly 70% of teenage pregnancies come from women raised in fatherless homes, and these times these same women have significantly higher abortion rates than women raised by both a father and a mother. On the whole, fatherless kids are 20 times more likely to be incarcerated and 11 times more likely to exhibit violent behavior than children of two-parent households. If a man and a wife, this one's one of the most interesting stats, if a man and a wife raise a child, they're less likely to end up in jail, but they have the same chance as children raised by just their fathers. Let me read that one more time. If a man and a wife raise a child, they're less likely to end up in jail, but they have the same chances as children raised by just only their fathers. Girls with no fathers have low self-esteem, and obviously this ties to crime, mental issues, economy, suicide rates, all these other things. One, how did we get here, okay? Was this intentional to want to break the family nucleus where this is not a leader's bulletin we want to be winning in? Like, this is not something to be bragging about. We're we're a very competitive nation. We want to be the best at innovation. We want to be the best in this and that. This is not a place to brag about. How do we get here? And, Dennis, what's the solution? One of the ways we got here was the feminist movement. One of its mottos was, A a woman without a man is like a fish without a bicycle. Very famous phrase from early feminism in the 60s, 70s. Men are essentially regarded as useless. Uh, We need need their sperm, and other than that, we really don't need men. Kids don't need men. I I cite in something I wrote a New York Times survey of experts, quote-unquote, which usually means foolish people who know one thing. And uh, the, the, the whole heading was, are, are fathers necessary? It was actually a, a, co- a big column 
uh, in the New York Times and, and repeatedly that fathers are not necessary. Again, the secular intellectual is, is generally a stupid person. Fathers are essential. Everything you read proves it, and yet we, we live in a world that denies the obvious. That's a good phrase for the modern age, the, the, the denial of the obvious. Girls without uh, fathers in their lives are far more promiscuous, and you may say, so what? And the answer to the so what is, well, there is a what. The what is they get more depressed. They, they get angrier. They're less, they're less happy. And uh, I am a, uh, I've written a book on happiness because I consider happiness to be an extremely important part of life. The happy make the world better. The unhappy make it worse. Happiness is a, is a moral issue, not just an emotional issue. How did we get here? We got here once again thanks to secularism. Religious homes are far more likely to have a father in them. Uh, people are not willing to acknowledge that the roots of Western civilization, which are called Judeo-Christian, when you abolish the roots of a civilization, the trees fall down. I mean, I, I don't know why that shouldn't be obvious. What are we going to supplant it with? And we have supplanted it with, with again, foolish ideas. Men are not necessary. Women don't need them and children don't need them. And so the men got the message, and now what do we have, seven million able-bodied men, young able-bodied men who have taken themselves out of the workplace? This is a tragedy for society, it is a tragedy for, uh, for men, and it's a tragedy for women looking for a good man to marry. It's also part of the, uh, uh, another secular idiocy of the left, and that is that you don't need to marry. This is, a, this is an old-fashioned idea that people should marry. Uh, three generations of women, starting with, with the baby boomers, of which I am a member, were taught, uh, yeah, you, you want to get married, get married, but young woman, the thing that will bring you the greatest joy and happiness and fulfillment is career, hmm. which is one of the greatest lies uh, in, in, in the world of lies. It's, it's, it's really as much a lie as men give birth uh, but when you hear something enough, you start to believe it. Oh, I don't, I don't really need marriage. I'll be great with a career. I've written over a 1,000 columns. They're all on the Internet, 20 years, fifth, about 50 a year. And only one of them I didn't write. All I did was transcribe a call to my radio show. And I have a male-female hour every week. And then I discuss this issue. Tell me, if you pursued career and not marriage, has it worked out for you? 50-year-old woman who is a CEO, makes a good living. She has three degrees from universities. And essentially, almost in tears, spoke eloquently about how being a CEO doesn't quite compensate for going home to an empty home when she sees friends with a husband and children. And everybody knows marriages have issues and children are issues. But the purpose of life is not to avoid issues. It's to embrace the fullness of life. And, and I'll just say point blank, because nobody, nobody tells people things they don't want to hear. Everybody wants to be loved. I have no such aim. And uh, you don't grow up if you don't get married. This is a message to men. This is a message to women. You can be very successful. Uh, you don't grow up, okay? You can be a wonderful human being, good volunteer services. You can, you know, you can adopt uh, stray puppies and, and do all sorts of things. You, every married person, including people who married and had a lousy marriage and divorced, will acknowledge they grew up when they got married. Mm. And then you grow up exponentially when you have children and you're married. But people don't want to grow up. The left is Peter Pan. The left is the embracing of immaturity. And you have the, it, it, most professors are immature people. And they, they m help develop immature young people. It, it is a catastrophe. They don't hear from people like me. Obviously they do. I mean, I, I, let me, let me, make this. They don't hear from people like me, meaning that we're not their professors. 
We try to go around it with PragerU, with lectures, with books, and, and, and not just me, thank God. There are other wonderful people uh, giving good messages, uh, but uh, we're censored. I mean, to, uh, and, and you know, Ben Shapiro went to Berkeley and they had $600,000 in security. There's no security for the most radical leftist speaker. They don't need one bodyguard. Why do conservatives need $600,000 of security? Do, you, do, do people not put two and two together? The damage the left does, all it does is destroy. The American Medical Association has announced that the sex of a child should not be on a birth certificate because we don't know it until they choose it. This is the American Medical what? Association. Can you pull this up? Yes, pull it up. The American medicine. Yes, the American. See, this is the this is the thing. People don't know the damage the left does to everything it touches: art, music, education, children, male female relations, and medicine. It has corrupted the medical field. The American Society of American Academy of Pediatrics or Pediatricians, whatever the full name is, they've they've come out for affirmative care to give minors. Uh, uh, hor hormone blockers. I mean, that is evil. You want? Yes, that's a new evil. You asked for a new evil. Mm -hmm. What we're doing to kids now in the name of trans, uh, of, 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 of transgender, is pure evil. You know, Dennis, you talked about happiness, and the book you're referencing for people that are listening. He was referencing his book, "Happiness Is a Serious Problem," which, if you haven't read it, read it. He's not on a book tour. This was written many, many years ago. But the truths that are in there about finding purpose and the things that you do, and that the pursuit of happiness is not the pursuit of joy. Mm -hmm. You know, joy is deeper in your heart. Happiness is, hey, my team won today. It was a pretty good day. And if all you're searching for is those those moments of happiness, that's, that's not joy. It's the deeper joy about service and what you do and purpose in life. And thank you for writing that book. Thank you. Chuck Colson, the late Chuck Colson wrote, How Now Shall We Live? A wonderful book you're probably familiar with. And he was talking about the steps out. What do you think are some of the steps out? Because you very eloquently... Steps out of... What, what, you're, what you're talking about here, what initial steps out, you know, as a society, as people, or as a country... You, you talk oh, about I, the I, left very eloquently. What are our initial steps? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a terrific first step. To know that you have to fight your nature. You can't develop as a human being. You can't even be a happy human being if you don't fight your nature. That's the number one issue in life. Unpack that. Okay. First of all, uh, human nature is not basically good. Uh, only the naive who live in... Uh, who have lived a spoiled life believe the nonsense that human nature is basically good. I don't say human nature is basically evil. I'm saying it's not basically good. You, uh, 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 number two, your own nature. There are two natures we have. We all have human nature, and we all have our own natures. You have to battle both. My father told me all of my childhood, I'm lazy. I didn't like hearing it. Thank God he said it to me. My father... My father criticized me way more than he praised me, and I'm a better man for that fact. Much better. There's no comparison. And, and uh, uh, because I, I, that's not the role, uh, the role of a parent in the, the world of the, of the stupid in which we live is to give kids self-esteem. So you give them trophies for playing. Not trophies for winning, trophies for playing. That's damaging to children. You don't think you have to achieve in, or in order to get a reward from society. Well, you do, kid. You have to achieve. If you didn't win, you don't get a trophy. End of issue. So the first thing, people call my show, and they go, Dennis, you're a father figure to me. I'm having a kid. Give me a piece of advice. And I always have the same. Give them, teach them self-control, not self-esteem. You get self-esteem from self-control. Self-control is the root to self-esteem. It is the root to happiness. It is the root to a productive. It is the, the root, the only root to a good life. Uh, your, your words carry a lot of weight, so I, I want to I want to unpack what you just said right there. Will your father give you? By the way, the same thing. You're you're lazy. You're lazy. You're lazy. That's the one thing my dad kept telling me when I was a kid. So it's very common to what my dad told me as a kid. 
I read this book called The Genius in All of Us 15 years ago, 14 years ago, and t- maybe 10 years ago. In the statistic it showed in there, it said they're in the three different classes of parents, lower class, middle class, upper class. Okay, so lower, middle, upper. Lower class, from, from the day the kid is born to 18, they, are, uh, uh, they get negative affirmations, means no's and rejection 600,000 600, times more than positive, lower class. Middle was 100,000 more negative affirmation okay, than positive. And the upper class parents to their kids was 100,000 more than criticism. Make sense? That's what this book is talking about. So the, the genius more you all achieved, the more you were criticized. Is that what you're no, saying? No, the, 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 the parents of... The parents of the upper class parents, the way they spoke to their kids is, what you did was wrong, but I believe you can improve this, that, that, that. Versus the lower class parents would say, you're an idiot, you're a moron, why'd you do right. that? So okay. that- my father was right, I was lazy. Calling a kid an idiot or a moron is not helpful. That's what I mean. You yes. can't overcome being an idiot or a moron. I mean, that that's... The parent is an idiot and a moron. I agree. Who says that? Yes. So I'm I'm not advocating that. I know you're not. I, I'm a, I'm advocating the opposite though of what we're doing. Oh, you're terrific. Oh my God, you made a bowel movement. I I, I gotta <laughs> get you a prize. That is the most beautiful poop I have ever seen in my life. Or it's America's favorite word. It was an awesome poop. Oh my God. I mean, so it it never ends. The the constant praise. It doesn't mean anything. Or or you become a narcissist. You expect that praise. There, there's got to be a balance. Parents should be real. You did a good job, good. I, I, I commend your good job. You did a bad job, you did a bad job. My, my wife, who I, I think uh, she was a single mom, and she sort of uh, uh, is, an, is an outlier because she raised two wonderful boys. Uh, and I don't know if I'm saying it because she's my wife. It's just a fact. You met one my She's a lawyer. She, she, well, she... she she is a lawyer, but she doesn't practice law. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, she so she told her kids as follows, and I, I hope I get it right. And she's she's listening right now, so <laughs> I'm sure she's a little worried. But basically, if you uh, if you do something wrong, if you're guilty and the police pick you up, don't waste your one phone call on me. Mm. That that was a very direct statement to kids. Uh, you use drugs that night. You don't sleep in my house. I mean, that that's that's good stuff. I asked on my radio show. My radio show has been my human laboratory because I not only talk to millions, I talk with tens of thousands. With that's an amazing thing to say, and I've learned an immense amount. So I often just ask questions. If you didn't use drugs in high school, why didn't you? And I had no idea what the answers would be. Virtually what a every great single question. Isn't it? What yeah. a great question. So, right. So, here was the answer. Overwhelmingly, they all said the same thing men and women. My mother would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, the mother. Yes, isn't that interesting? interesting. Mother yeah. would kill me. Yes, my mother would wow. kill me. Not the father. Well, the, the assumption in a two parent home is. If you get by your mother, your father will torture you. you know, I don't know what's worse than killing you, but uh, you know she's the first line of defense. He, he will dismember you. You know, once gotcha. I kill you, he'll dismember you. I don't know, but but yes, she's the first line of defense. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, it, I, yesterday I was playing football <coughs> with my nephew. Right. I don't have kids. I'm working on it. Um, uh, but I, I, I take an active role in, in my nephew's life, and I, I he's the only child. And I, I see that he's sort of been coddled a little bit. And it's kind of my job as the uncle to be like, toughen up, kid. And every time, I said, every time you catch the ball, we, we have to catch it, throw it back and forth 10 times. If you, you know, and then we move on to the next lesson. And he, every time he dropped it, it was an excuse. Oh, it's slippery outside. Oh, the sun's in my eye. Oh, it's muddy. Whatever it is. I'm like, listen, if the ball hits your hand, you got to catch it, kid. That's the bottom line here, right? I played football. That's my thing. If it hits your hand, you got to catch it. My question to you is this. Uh, I said, once you were done with this, you'll get a reward for actually doing well. If you don't do good today, you get nothing. So he's he's negotiating, well, can I get this? Can I get that? You, you talked about the trophy culture and everybody gets something. If, if for, the, for the young parents out there who are raising kids, how should what, give me some case examples. Like if they screw up, 
how should you address it? And if they do well, how should you address it? So it depends what the screw-up means. Uh, if the screw-up is a moral screw-up, which is the only ones I am really concerned with, uh, then they need to be punished. Uh, I, I, uh, here's another message. In addition to the, you, you have to control, you have to fight your nature. Most important message of all. But I, 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 had, uh, I had another message to my kids, I, which is almost unheard of for a Jewish upper middle class parent. It's almost unheard of. But I said to my kids repeatedly, I don't care about your grades. Which is almost unheard of. I unheard mean, true, of I know. And, 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 uh, among my peers, they, they they found it almost unbelievable that I did this. All I care about is your character. Okay, so I don't I don't care about your grades. All I care about is your character. <laughs> and uh, I think I have two good kids. And one went through a very difficult time. Uh, he he he. One of my kids is biological. One my, one of my kids is adopted from at day from the day of birth. Uh, he was born to a meth addict mother. I did not know that at the time, and that that played havoc in, in his early life. As it turns out, he's terrific today. He's married. He wants to make a family. He's he, he's he. Uh, I thank God for him. My older son was was never a, a, a difficult issue, uh, and uh, but I, that was my message to them. Character is is all that matters to me, and if I if I if I heard that they cheated on a test. Or uh, that they were uh, gratuitously uh, mean to a kid, or whatever, whatever character flaw. Then I came down on them. Uh, if they if they didn't get good grades, I didn't care. I didn't care if they went to college. I didn't care what college they went to. I, I uh, most colleges are despicable places today. <laughs> despicable. They teach sick doctrines. Babies teach babies at our universities. If I hear you're a professor of gender studies, I assume you're a fool. If I hear you're an epidemiologist, I assume you're a fool. Do you know what epidemiologists did to the world with the lockdowns? Do you know the damage they did to kids? Epidemiologists telling public health officials, telling people to keep schools closed for two years when kids had essentially no danger from COVID? Do you know the damage that the these so-called experts did to kids? Why aren't parents angry at these people? Why do they still believe in quote-unquote experts. Sweden closed down nothing. It has the lowest excess death rate of the last two years on earth. No kid got COVID and they kept the schools open till the age of 16. Sweden shamed the rest of the world in staying open. Thank God for Sweden. It was our, it was our litmus test. People, it, it is very hard. It's hard for me I went to Columbia University graduate school, and, and I remember th if you were a professor of history, I almost sh shook because I thought, wow, what a, I'm meeting someone who has mastered such a great discipline of history or professor of English or whatever. But now if I hear you're a professor, I assume you're a fool. Not all professors are fool. I just make that assumption. Wow. Guilty by association almost. No, not by association, by title. By profession. It's not because they're associating with other fools. Do you know that, uh, I think her name is Amy Wax, a professor at University of Pennsylvania Law School, Ivy League Law School. She wrote a column with another professor saying, you know what, middle class uh, bourgeois values are great values. Basically, as follows, uh, that you, uh, you graduate high school, you get a job, you get married, and then have children after you get married. Those are the four things, and you'll be a winner in this society, basically, if you just do those four things. Just for writing that, 250 law professors at the University of Pennsylvania asked the university to not allow her to teach the introductory course she was teaching. She's been ostracized by fellow lawyers because all she affirmed was middle-class values which they call now, of course, white supremacist values, which, of course, is an insult to non-whites. Oh, I see. Only whites should graduate high school, get a job, get married, and then have children? Blacks should not do that? The only systemic racism in America is from the left. They believe in separate graduations for blacks, separate dormitories for blacks. They believe that it is wrong to be race blind. They believe race tells me something about you. So I have a great question. If race is important... What do you know about a person if you know he or she is black? 
Name me one thing you know about that person. After all, it's, it's, it's supposedly a very important aspect, the most important aspect, according to the morons who teach at colleges. You know Name nothing. Me, nothing. Nothing. You know nothing if you know someone is white. You know nothing if someone is anything. Right. It means nothing. MLK Skin, yesterday. Yes, MLK, exactly. Content Skin color is, 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 is less important than shoe color. If your shoes don't match your outfit, especially for a woman, it matters. <laughs> yeah. But your your skin color doesn't mean a damn thing. How do you judge character, though? Like, you back to your question about your uh, the point you made about your kids, about how character matters more than their grades. We had the conversation with Neil deGrasse Tyson a week ago about how you measure success, grades, and what it was like, how you can uh, bounce back from failure, you know, your ability to associate with people in your class, a, a multitude of, uh, of reasons uh, of how you can predict success, right? The predictors of success. But character, you know, moral fiber, how do you, like if you're raising one of your kids, how do you grade that? It's easy to say, oh, you got a 1600 on your SATs, you got a 4.0, great kid. You know, you were president of your class. These are accolades mm -hmm. you can actually tangibly assess. Well, there are, there are many character? ways. There, there are many ways. So uh, n not in order of importance, but the first one that comes to my mind is, are they, are they truth tellers? Lying is the, is the mother of evil. All evil emanates from lies. That's why I, I'm so afraid of the left, because uh, truth is not a left-wing value. It's a liberal value, and it is a conservative value, but it's not a left-wing value. So uh, 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 do they lie? That's a big one. Uh, an, another one is I watch, I watch how they behave. How do they treat a stranger? Do, do they try to make people who enter their life feel good? Are they, are they warm to the stranger, to, to some, somebody who comes to the house? If, if, they, if, if they meet an autistic kid, do they spend a little time trying to talk to that kid? I mean, there are so many indicators in the course of a day, whether you're a narcissist, do they only talk about themselves? Do they, do they ask questions about people that they meet? Uh, uh, it's, I, I, your question actually uh, is something I, I should write a, a, a piece on. I, I just, I thank you for that because I, I have sort of, uh, I'm deeply involved in music, so I always think in terms of music. I conduct orchestras as an avocation, and I don't have perfect pitch. Perfect pitch means that if you hear a C sharp, you know it's C sharp. I, it's, 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 you either have it or you don't. It's a gift. I have, a, I, I have sort of a gift, and, and I don't take credit for it. It is a gift. I, 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 I don't know how smart people are immediately. Because I don't give a damn how smart they are. Uh, uh, but I do know I, I, I'm a pretty good measurer of a person's decency. There, there are little things that, that I, I see in people in, in interactions. And I, I don't always have clues, but I often do. But if, if you don't have the gift, it has to be written out. So uh, I'm going to do that. But watching, for example, I, I, I always tell the, the example, if you're on a date, don't, don't watch how the date treats you. They're going to treat you fine because they want something. <laughs> watch how they treat the waiter. That, that to me is really important. How do you treat, how you treat your boss is not an indication. How you treat the janitor is an indication. When I see people where I work at my radio station in Los Angeles, when, when I see people talk to the janitor, so how's your day, Jose? How's your day, Joe? Whatever it is, that they even know their name, that, that's a, a big sign to me. So th there, there are indications. And uh, another biggie, you can't be a good person if you're not grateful. One of the reasons I loathe the left is because the left teaches you to be ungrateful. Ingratitude is the, is the deepest component of leftism. The, the most obvious is they're not grateful to be American. Is in, ingratitude and entitled the same thing? Does it have the similar meaning? They're, they're very related. Cousins. Yes. <laughs> Cousins, that's right. Uh, 
every grateful person is a good person. Every ungrate, ungrateful person is a bad person. Mm. It, it is it is the it, it's the the golden root to decency. So you should teach your child to be grateful. That's why saying thank you was so critical. And how many, by the way, talking about human nature, if human nature were good, how many times would you have to tell your, your kid, say thank you? Five? But how many times does it, the average parent say, say thank you? 10,000? Why didn't they get it on the third time if they're basically good? How much of the character is nature versus nurture? Meaning... Like my mother, Jewish mother, she's like, Adam, I don't care what you do. You just better be the best at it. And you better treat the janitor the same as the CEO. These are things I've heard my entire life. Like Tom has two daughters, very well-behaved girls. Pat's got four kids, mostly well-behaved. But the one thing I will say is he's taught them, do not lie, for sure, right? Read your books, do not lie, reward mechanisms. Uh, how much is nature versus nurture, like your parenting and your upbringing? Right. So with the nature versus nurture thing, I have a, uh, a funny answer. Nature is 100% and nurture is 100%. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the above. Is they're, they're, so, they're, so, they're both so critical. You can't control nature, though. You can control nurture. Well, you can control nature. How do you do that? Uh, by, by fighting it. I was lazy. Oh. So what did I do? Uh, I decided, I, I figured a way around it. I can't change the fact that i rather play than work. It's just a fact. Okay? I know that. So could every kid, though, right? Every kid right. Well, that uh, But I'm not a kid anymore, right. at least chronologically. I still am a kid, but not chronologically. So what did I do? I took on so many obligations, I had no choice. Mm -hmm. Right, busy. I mean, I, I'm I'm on your show. I had to get up at three thirty Pacific time to get here for this show. That's not my favorite time to wa awaken, but I took the obligation to be on your show. I couldn't call you. Go, you know, I'm really, uh, Patrick. I really feel bad. I, I'm still on California time. Sleep, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, my way, I. Uh, so I'm given the fact that I rather play than work. So I took on so many projects. You know, so rather work than play. You mean? Uh, no, I rather play than. Oh, work. you would rather. Yes, play than of work. course. Gotcha. Yes. So what I did was I took on all these obligations. <laughs> I have no choice. So I, you'll get a kick out of this. So the biggest project of my life, aside from PragerU and the radio and, and the column and all that, the biggest is this five-volume commentary on the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. It's called the Rational Bible. It's, it's the best-selling commentary on the Bible in America today. I am proud to say, because if you don't know, if if you do know the insights of the Bible, you will be a happier and better human being. Uh, uh, the, these are life-changing books. If people look up the Rational Bible, three volumes of the five are out: Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy. And I have no problem pushing it. Nobody writes Bible commentaries to get to get rich. Okay, let's be let's be honest. Okay, so especially the latest Deuteronomy. Okay, I mean you know oh my God, a guy's going to make a fortune. He wrote a Deuteronomy commentary. Uh, but uh, but the, if you read the, the the Amazon reviews, they, they it's it does change lives. And uh, I I get the I get these insights uh, f from them uh, from these books, and I try to share them. Uh, in in the writing of this. So why did I mention this, aside from that I wanted to mention it? So when De Deuteronomy was the last one, it's I'm not going in order. It's the fifth of the five books. So I got the, I got the copy of Deuteronomy in the mail two years ago, and it came out last, uh, just a, f a few months ago. And uh, I got it in the mail, and I look at it. Now, you most people would think, with all that work, and you see, and that's beautifully printed, by the way. The publisher did a gorgeous job. And I look at it. You would think, I would think, wow, that is, uh, I'm really proud of myself, or something like that, right? I, li I give you my word of honor. I, this, the only reaction I had was I looked at it, and I said, when did I write that? I just couldn't believe I had the time. That the, the the marvel to me was not the book and all of, all of the mm. wonderful things of seeing your own book. It was wow. When did I write that? I just powerful. Yeah. And, but and the answer is I had no choice. The 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 publisher expects a book from me. 
<laughs> so that's so when you of course you can fight your nature. That's that's exactly of course otherwise we're doomed. Such a simple concept for anybody to apply especially if you have a reputation of being lazy. Keep a busy calendar and commitments that you have to come through because you don't want to let people down. That's right. Yeah. Get busy. That's yeah. exactly right. That you you you, you got it. Well, you always get it. I, that's why I love talking to you. You, you, to, to your credit, and I'm interviewed a lot. You really listen. A lot of a lot of people who interview, they have a list of questions, and it's clear to me. I could say in in the middle, you know, I pooped really well yesterday, and they would then have <laughs> their own question. Amazing, Dennis. No, amazing. no, no. They wouldn't do them. No, that implied that they listened. They no, amazing, Dennis would be at least they listened. <laughs> My point is, they go to the next question. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so, so what's the key to success? They just kind of go to the next one. But Dennis, let's go to uh, this other topic with the last 30 minutes that we have together. I know Sue is outside as well. You guys got to drive. Uh, the declassified documents that have been found, the classified documents have been found, okay, with Joe Biden. And it, it's so interesting with the more and more we're learning, more things are coming out. The timing of Trump's, the timing of his, they knew about it right before midterms, but they held it back till now. What are your thoughts about what's going on here? There's, you know, a lot of people, I listened to Dan Bongino yesterday, Dan Bongino saying there's no way in the world the Biden administration is going to find documents like this and say, let's turn it in because we have to be honest. He says, you have to be a fool to believe they gave it up to the lawyers. He says, the only way this story is true is somebody on the inside either set him up or knew was there and found it because they are trying to do something to him. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think about what's going on with these classified documents? I don't have better insights than others in, into a lot of this political stuff. I have I, My insights are the big picture. The big picture is that, and I say this, I... I I really, I have to suppress tears because I so love this country, but I, I love truth more than I love the country. And the truth is we are as corrupt as, as a third world banana Republican in Central America. This is a corrupt country. The left has made it corrupt. I know people say Trump, 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 Trump. It is their way of, of, of masking the truth of the corruption. 51 heads of intelligence agencies signed a letter a few weeks before the 2020 election saying that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. They all lied, every single one. In other words, the entire intelligence apparatus of America is as corrupt as, as it is in Guatemala or Brazil or, or, or Iran. Not as evil, necessarily. They don't kill as many people as the Iranians, but, but they're as corrupt. They're just, they lie. They lie on behalf of the left, just like Pravda lied on behalf of the Communist Party in the Soviet <coughs> Union. Uh, we, the, the media lie on behalf of the left and the Democratic Party in the United States. I mean, that most Americans don't know the level of corruption is only because it's censored. How many Americans, every conservative American who, who listens to anything uh, uh, like talk radio or, or reads any conservative news source knows that 51 heads of intelligence signed a lying letter to enable uh, uh, Biden to win? But I don't think 2% of Americans, liberal or left, know that the 51 signed that letter. So uh, anything is possible with regard to why this is now coming out. Uh, but what, what will be interesting is they want to prosecute uh, Donald Trump for it. Will they prosecute Joe Biden for it? And by the way, maybe they will, in which case maybe the most nefarious uh, scenario is they just want to get rid of the guy because they know he can't win uh, the next election and they don't want him to run. I, I don't know. I'm not even saying that. All I want to know is, Will all of the condemnations of Donald Trump for unclassified documents at Mar-a-Lago be leveled at Joe Biden for unclassified documents in his garage? That, that's, that's the, uh, or excuse me, for not unclassified, classified documents in his garage. Uh, 
look, how many how many Americans know the truth about, about so much? Do you know how many people are dying? The, uh, see, this is a classic example of the left. If you point out how many young people are dying, like athletes, just dropping dead on the field, and, and I see reports like this regularly, I mean regularly like at least every week, and this is just what we know of, and then you say, well, shouldn't we just investigate whether the vaccine has been beneficial or harmful to young people? Young meaning un- under 50. That's a pretty large young group. Shouldn't we just investigate? Oh, you're an anti-vaxxer. Well, well, my children are completely vaccinated. By the way, I'm not sure that I would now do that. They so, Talking about lying and what the left has done to medicine, That in, you know that in California now, as, as of last week, in California, a doctor who says things that the AMA or the, or the California Medical Association differ with can lose his or her license to practice medicine. Doctors are not free in California to speak out on medical issues if, if, if Pfizer, that's really what it means, if Pfizer doesn't agree with them. I, I mean, the, the, the level of corruption, uh, masking kids at, at two years of age, First of all, I think you're an idiot if you mask yourself at 52 years of age, but that that's that's that is beside the point. But a two-year-old, we have hurt children and the and the the children's hospitals that that allow surgeons to remove healthy girls' breasts if they say they're boys. Did you hear the, the latest story? It was just what was it yesterday? I reported where was it? Yeah, outside of San Diego, uh, a. Um, in the the girls' locker room, a a a, a male shows his genitalia in the showers. The seventeen year old says, you know, I, "I don't I don't want to see I don't want to see and I don't want my little sister to see this." But they say, "Sorry, this was at the YMCA, once called the Young Men's Ch- Ch- Children Association." Did you get it? You got it. You guys are fast. Seventeen Rob G. year old scolded for crying over. Transgender woman's penis at YMCA. Look, she's she's scolded. This seventeen-year-old is scolded. This is the girl speaking. Yes, this is the girl speaking. That's exactly right. R- Rebecca, R- Rebecca Phillips, Phillips, 17, Phillips said 17, she was changing, said she after, was swimming. changing after swimming one day last month at the Santee YMCA when she spotted a naked trans woman in the changing rooms. So here's the story. You get it. This is the sick world we're living what in. What is a naked? If you show your penis to young girls. You are arrested. But if you show your penis to young girls and say you're a female, you're rewarded. And and protected. Clown world. Protected, rewarded. Uh, and and the and the girl who objects is the one who's punished. So so let me let me ask Because you're intolerant. That's right. Let me let me ask this question. So to me, logically, that that can't make sense to anybody, right? Logically. So so Dennis, how much of this creating momentum? has to do that the 1% are so much louder than the other 99% who are just saying it's not a big deal, let it go. Well, what you have is the usual phenomenon, cowardice is the human norm. Again, human nature is not basically good. Most people, including me, our nature is to be a coward. I've had to fight that, and I'm not, I'm not a coward. That, that I can say categorically. Uh, but you have to fight it. The natural inclination in life is to be afraid, afraid of, uh, of being disliked, afraid of being ostracized, afraid of being fired, afraid of being shut down, afraid of whatever it is. Uh, that's one of the, another reason why uh, uh, the only answer to all of this is the Judeo-Christian code, which says you fear God, you don't fear man. The, the, the only out in not fearing human beings is essentially fearing God. Uh, it, it's, it's a basic uh, biblical principle. But uh, that's what it is. People are afraid uh, to... Uh, to s- why, why do the girls at the University of Pennsylvania a, a swim team? W- why did they continue to compete when, the, when this guy who said he's a girl uh, went from m- male swimming, where he was a nothing, to female swimming, where he was a champion? He deprived all these girls of, of winning uh, races... Uh, because he said he was a girl, and uh, and every one of the girls had to go along with this, knowing they were being cheated uh, by by a man who says he's a woman. They were cheated. The guy's a cheat. 
or the woman's a cheat. Call her whatever, call him her whatever you want, is a cheat. And the New York Times supports cheating. The New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, they, they're, they are morally awful mm-hmm. uh, uh, vehicles for lying to the public. And so here is the question. Why did the girls compete? If every girl on the team said, we're not racing, it would have ended this fraud of having men compete in women's sports. But they won't. They're afraid. Because if they do that, the University of Pennsylvania threatened them. That they, you know, we will come down. They may have been evicted from the university, but they wouldn't have kicked out a whole team. But the girls, understandably, were afraid. They'll be called transphobes. You don't want to be called a transphobe, right? Of course not. New York Times will call you a transphobe. If the girls decided not to race, the New York Times, that sick editorial page of the New York Times, would have said they're transphobic <clears throat> girls. Which, They're which, haters. which label right now is the is is the biggest career ending label one can get? There, there's well, there's there's few like, home, like, oh, racist, homophobe, transphobe. I mean, and, and, by the way, did you ever notice? Isn't it interesting? There's a word for Jew hatred, anti-Semitism. There's a word for Muslim hatred, Islamophobe. Why isn't there a word for Christian hatred? Because the left makes up our vocabulary. The most hated group, the most hated religious group on earth today, are Christians. They're certainly the most killed. And I'm a Jew saying this. Uh-huh. But there's no word for, nobody hates Christians. Uh, if you show a picture of Muhammad, a painting of Muhammad, not a cartoon, a Muslim painting of Muhammad just done in Hamlin University, look that one up, H-A-M-L-I-N-E, the, the art professor who taught the course said, I, I'm telling you in advance, I'm putting up a, an, a, an ancient uh, uh, rendition of Muhammad if, if you are offended by it. You, you may not want to watch. And she was kicked out of Hamlin University. Mm-hmm. She's an art professor. She showed she showed the piece. Or Charlie but Hebdo. But wait, but, but yeah, or, or, well, that, that was, the, they were murdered. Right. Yes. So yeah, there it is. Hamlin Friends. University is fired over medieval painting done by Muslims. You can't show a Muslim painting of, of Muhammad. Zoom in for the picture so we can see what the picture is. Yeah, there it is. Well, so, this is because thou shall not create any caricature painting or image of- yeah but that's not in the Quran that's that some Muslims believe that later Muslims they obviously medieval Muslims didn't believe that they did make paintings of, of Muhammad but anyway that's where, you that's can have a going. crucifix my own my, the reason I raise it there is there there's a famous uh, quote-unquote artwork piss Christ which toured put that one up? Oh yeah, that that, that toured the American museums. It's a jar of urine with this. The guy put in a, 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 a crucifix in his own urine, and it went all around the country. The, nobody's afraid of Christians. The Book of Mormon. It's a uh, whole the Book thing of on Mormon. Broadway. Nobody's afraid of Mormons. Of course. That they're afraid of Muslims because cowardice is a central tenet of of, of leftism. Back to Pat's question of which which is the worst label to have. Is there one that's worse than no, no, anti-Semitic with Kanye? That's that's obviously not a thing. They're they're all tied for first. However, they can dismiss you. They'll they'll uh, they'll just use the term. I don't know why why used to be racist though. Right, if you were labeled a racist or a bigot, you were done. Right, but. Every white is racist, so therefore there's no such thing as racism. As soon as you say every, you have ended the issue. That's right. It, it, it's, but, by the way, it's such a joke. Here I am. I'm, I'm, your, I'm the uh, DEI uh, head at, at your university, diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion, and I'm telling you every white is racist. So obviously they're speaking autobiographically, are they not? Hello, I'm a racist, and you should trust me. <laughs> I don't quite follow that. Anyway, it's just that's another great lie. For the record, I don't have a racist bone in my body. I don't give a damn about your color. Simple as that. But but that is now called racist. Did you know? Look up that you, you, University of California list of microaggressions. If you say colorblind, you're a racist. Colorblind is a racist. <laughs> yes. What would, what if, you, if you say there is only one race, the human race, that is considered racist by the University of California. You were how old when MLK was? There it is, colorblindness. So I would one. have been, uh, what was that, 68? Yeah. Yeah, so, so I, I would have been 19 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
everything he I, I assume that was when you're going through a mm-hmm. major situation in your life you're in college you're learning you're seeing well no all these uh, assassinations uh, were uh, I, I I I didn't understand what was happening to my beloved America I I have to admit it was it was disconcerting obviously prior to since 19 was 1968 when when MLK was shot and Bobby Kennedy was that the worst year that you can remember or is it even worse now the worst year was 2020 with covid lockdowns not just the lockdown, the riots. Worse than nineteen sixty-eight. Over a lie. The, uh, uh, George Floyd was not killed because he was black. It's just a lie. It's another left-wing lie. If it's not a lie, then I, sh- I must retire from public life. But if it is a lie, the New York Times should go out of business. One of us is lying to the public. Either he was killed because he's black or he wasn't killed because he's black. However, I have big evidence, and that is that the Attorney General of Minnesota... Uh, uh, whose name eludes me for a moment, but he he is a big, he's a black, and he's a man of the left, and he did not charge Derek Chauvin with racism. This was not a hate crime because he had zero evidence that it had anything to do with George Floyd being black. The entire year of riots and protests was based on a lie. Keith Ellison? That, that wouldn't have been Keith that. Ellison, that's correct. Keith Ellison. That's right. And and you, you, listen, this is two years ago, two and a half years ago, so we've spoken about this God knows how many times. What was the outcome? You know, the whole uh, saying, never uh, miss the opportunity of a crisis. Who said that? Rahm Emanuel. Somebody yes, said yes, Emanuel right, said it. Yes. So it, it, it was to use that crisis to eliminate a man. Is that kind of what it was? To use that crisis to get Partially, rid of a guy? But it was also to use that crisis to to uh, undo American history. Uh, Donald Trump was absolutely right in predicting, you know, they're going after the the Confederates uh, uh, today. They're going to go after George Washington and Abraham Lincoln tomorrow. That's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. The erasure of, of America's noble history. By the way, you shouldn't, I don't know if we should even erase the ignoble history. Peter Stuyvesant, the the Dutchman who who ruled or governed New York before it became New York, it was New Amsterdam first. Every every Jew who knows history knows he was knows he was an anti semite. I would not be for the removal of a Peter Stuyvesant uh, sculpture. Uh, I listened to Wagner operas. Wagner hated Jews. Wagner was 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 a crackpot anti semite, but he wrote gorgeous music. I listened to Wagner. I mean, once you start, it never ends, and it doesn't end. That is exactly the point. What is it? There's a fam- famous statement of, of Soviet dissidents. In the Soviet Union, uh, the future is known. It is the past that is always changing. <laughs> That's what's happening in America. The past is always changing. According to the New York Times, we were founded in 1619. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's up there with men give birth. But uh, the, the 2020 was so sad to me because I realized the, the ease with which you can brainwash a civilization. I always thought my field of study was communism at the Russian Institute at Columbia University. Spent, I spent a lot of time in communist countries. I always thought that you can only brainwash a population in a tyranny. And this was a revelation to me. You can brainwash a population in a free country. Uh, it, it, Dennis, uh, as a Jew yourself, it, when you saw what was going on with Kanye and the things he was saying, and then boom, Adidas, and his marriage, and you know everything you listen to, his comments about Hitler on Alex Jones, and now he's been kind of low key for the last six weeks, which I think is a great idea. The fact whoever he listened to, good for him for to kind of taking a break, and uh, apparently low key he got married to somebody that uh, no one knows about. It was done in a very low key way. Now I don't know if this is true or not. It's just what the media is saying. How did you how did you process what he was saying uh, about Jews? Were you upset? Were you frustrated? Were you saying, well, partially he's right about this. Well, he's not right about this. I can't believe he said that. What feelings did you get when he was saying what he was saying? Well, I don't I don't work on feelings uh, as much. I, I try to think through rationally. Like I wrote a book on anti-Semitism. I, I have fought it all of my life. The book is called Why the Jews? And there, there's every, every population has a percentage of people who hate Jews. Uh, they, 
there are a whole host of reasons why people might hate Jews. Uh, and as I point out in my book and in the piece I wrote on Kanye West, one of my columns, non-Jews need to know something. Anti-Semitism destroys societies. I'm not saying it because I'm a Jew. I'm saying it because it's true. No society has survived anti-Semitism. Spain was one of the greatest world powers. Then it had the Spanish Inquisition and the Spanish expulsion of the Jews in 1492. And have you heard from Spain in the last 500 years? It, it went downhill uh, with, the speed, with speed of a skier after it kicked out its Jews. Germany was, was the most vibrant uh, culture in Europe uh, before Hitler. The most vibrant in, 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 in the arts, in, in, in philosophy, in science. And then they had the Holocaust. What do you hear from Germany? Volkswagen? I mean, what, 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 the economy? Is, can, can people even name a living German? <laughs> uh, it's, and not to mention what, what was done to Germany as a result of Hitler being uh, in power. The Germans, the losses in Germany, the, the rape of, Ger of German women by Soviet soldiers. It, it, it is, you're an idiot if you're a non-Jew and you don't fight anti-Semitism. I don't even care if people like Jews. I care if people hate Jews. You don't like Jews? Don't like Jews. Fine. I, I, it doesn't. I, it doesn't. Everybody has a pet group that they may not like. Okay. The Germans didn't like the Poles. The Poles didn't like the Russians. The Russians don't like the Ukrainians. It, 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 everybody dislikes his neighbor. The British didn't like the Irish. The Irish didn't like the British. It doesn't mean a damn thing. And it, uh, jokes I used to hear that were called Polish jokes. When I went to England, the exact same jokes, but it was the Irish. <laughs> the exact same joke. That was what was so funny about it. So I don't, it's dislike or don't like and hate. They're a very, very, very bit different thing. If a man can say Hitler was a good man, he, he is a sick poop. He's a sick puppy. I mean, there's just, there, there's something very scary about such a human being. And by the way, it, if you have to be a Jew to be offended by that, if somebody said Stalin was a good person, I would think the person is a sick puppy too. And it wasn't Jew Jews who Stalin went after mostly. He killed 6 million, 5 million Ukrainians deliberately, plus 30 million Russians in general. Uh, 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 but didn't how many Americans died fighting Hitler? Isn't that an insult to all the Americans who died in World War II? Oh, Hitler was, oh, oh, really? So these Americans died in vain. If Hitler was a good guy, then your grandparents who died or fought, they, uh, they died in vain. They fought in vain. They got blinded in, or, or, or shell-shocked in vain. Uh, but people don't have, a, they, they, they don't have either courage or a moral compass. To, to distinguish between good and bad. So you, you don't like Jews, you don't like Jews, fine. I, I'm not asking you. It's, I, as I said, I'm repeating myself, forgive me. Uh, but hating Jews is a very bad thing. Dennis, what's the difference between a Jew saying there are still people who hate Jews versus a black uh, a person on the left saying there are still people who hate blacks? Yes, there are people who hate blacks. That's correct. But uh, so... There are people who hate every group. They're, 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 therefore, what? The question is how many? What percentage of whites in America hate blacks? It's tiny. The percentage is tiny. tiny. Okay? Uh, uh, the, the, what was it? Larry Elder, who, who, you know, he could reel off these statistics. Uh, if you woke him up at 3 a.m., <laughs> Uh, he's, he's gifted in that way. I'm not gifted in that way to know statistics by heart, but uh, he shows how many whites voted for Obama. Uh, and, you know, that, what was it? The percentage of whites who voted for Obama was smaller than the percentage of whites who voted for some white candidate. I don't remember what it was. Uh, th this, this is the least racist multi-ethnic country on the face of the earth in, in, the, in the history of the world. Here's a statistic no kid at Harvard knows. Okay? At Harvard. I'm picking the, the creme de la creme. And that is that uh, ask, ask a kid at Harvard how many, uh, how many slaves, how many black slaves were brought to the United States in the transatlantic slave trade. And then ask them how many blacks came to the United States voluntarily in the last 50 years. 
The first one is 360,000. The second number is 3 million. <laughs> Are they stupid, by the way? If America is systemically racist, every black who moves here is an idiot. You can't have it both ways. And as I always say, any Jews moved to Germany in the 1930s? Not one. Right? Because that was systemically racist. Blacks moved to the United States because it's the best country on earth for a black to live. Period. And they know it. Only the left denies it. What was the number again? 360 and 3 million? 360,000 versus 3 million. That's correct. And, uh, you know, I take a risk with any one of these numbers because if it's wrong, I lose my reputation. But I've been broadcasting 40 years, and truth is my number one goal. Those are the, those are the data. And I you know where results. I got the data on the 3 million from? William Sapphire in the New York Times in the 1980s. That's the amazing thing. That's where I got it. L last thing here, a couple minutes. So uh, 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 Holocaust, you got uh, slavery, okay? We're not comparing two different tragedies, so that's not what we're going to be doing. We're not sending years of which is worse, which is this. I'm not doing that. I would. Uh, By the way, I, I believe in gradations of evil. Slavery is despicable and evil, but in the final analysis, you could at least live. In the final analysis, the Jews weren't slaves. Jews would have given their right arm to be slaves. They were exterminated. There is a difference, and people need to know that. I do make moral distinctions. If we don't, we lose our humanity. To, that's not the question I was going to. My question wasn't that. My question was going to be, why after such a dramatic event that happened to Jews, okay, with the intentions of wanting to eliminate every single Jew on the face of the planet, right? right. This is what Hitler's vision was, right? Why is it years later, after a crisis like that, what values and principles helped Jews pretty much own Hollywood, do well in business, do well in life. Oh, I'll tell you, I have the answer Go for, for you. It. Yeah. They didn't see themselves as victims. It is the most paralyzing thing in black life, what the left is doing to blacks. The left hates you, blacks. Just you. No, they don't hate you. They have contempt for you. Telling you you're a victim is paralyzing. Jews did not walk around thinking they're victims even after the Holocaust. Why not? Because they knew it is completely self-destructive. How did they know? I don't know. It's a great... Uh, well, maybe because of the Jewish tradition has always been, we take responsibility for our own suffering. So why wouldn't the media try to target the Jews to make them feel victims? How come because they didn't the, succeed with the, Jews? The media doesn't have contempt for Jews. It has contempt why for not, blacks. Why not, though? Why not? Because the left has contempt for blacks. Because they use them. They don't use Jews. Why? Why can't they use Jews? If, if they can use Ju any Ju sect, Ju they would yeah. do it. So why can't well, they use well, Jews? Well, Jews, Jews are, I mean, Jews are disproportionately on the left. I mean, there's no, no way around it. So, uh, in effect, there's no there's no need to to keep. They already Jews have in a, them, in a yeah, sense. In a sense, yes. I got you. I yeah. got you. Interesting. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to hold you up at ten thirty. Well, let, me, let me. So, first of all, I, I love being with you, which is why I woke up, God knows when, <laughs> to, to get here. I really do. You, you, it's a joy to be with you. And number two, I do want to just tell people if if they are not familiar with my work, I do a weekly thing for PragerU called the the. Um, the Fireside Chat, uh, it's, it's a podcast every week at PragerU.com. And uh, my, among my books uh, is The Rational Bible. If you are convinced there is no God and religion is nonsense, it is written for you. There are three volumes. Pick the, any one you like. We're going to put the link to all of it below. We're going to continue with the podcast. So, gang, hang tight. We're going to go another 30 minutes because uh, I don't have my... Uh Zoom till uh, 11 o'clock. But, Dennis, appreciate you for coming out. This was fantastic. As usual, every time you come and you speak, you give a complete different perspective. And this was fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes, anytime. Anytime. So if you want to walk out, you can walk out. We're going to All right, very We're going to continue, though, gang. Hang Bye, back. everybody. Dennis Thank Prager, you. just Thank leaving you. the podcast. Bless you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, really. Great to see you in person. i, I got to make that list that you... Uh, Character, character. All right. I look forward to reading Let's that book. Let's continue. Guys, uh, uh, you know, I've had the privilege of speaking to Dennis multiple times over the last 13 years. Every time this man speaks, you just get a complete different perspective. And as Sue, you're still listening to this. We love you. You're awesome. Have a great day. I wish I could see you, but uh, maybe next time. Uh, so l let's get into it. Let's get into some of these other things. With you, when you heard about, Tom, with you as well, when you heard about the uh, – uh, 
the classified documents, if you want to just move over here, when you heard about the classified documents with uh, Joe Biden, how much of this with Dan Bongino's argument about saying the fact that there's no way, and, and here's a perspective when I kind of put it into context, like think about you're part of Biden's camp, okay, and you find classified documents. What do you do? Imagine if you're Reagan's camp, Clinton's camp, Bush's camp, Trump's camp, any camp. What do they do? Just assume what they're going to be doing. Wouldn't they say, hey, Mr. President, you got some uh, classified documents here. Can you please take these to, these, uh, to the office or put in the safe? It's not the place for it. You understand what I'm saying? We're just kind of like, sure. can we just take this back to the White House and not leave it here? It's just a very basic conversation. Like if someone found it yeah. back in the day. Yeah. I, like, can you see the visual? The car backs up and your own camp says, oh, oh, Mr. Biden, President Biden, you have that. No, we have to report this to FBI or, you know. I, it, it's a very confusing thing to see that happen. So what are your thoughts about what's going on with the documents? Well, look, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, you know, but I just look at who's speaking, what are they saying, and I interpret it. And right now, there is what you would call friendly fire coming in. Um, number one, any rational advisor to the president, your personal attorney, whoever it is, that notice this, or the people that were working with you at the Penn Biden Institute, where you clean out the office, mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, in that closet there, was there some reference documents in here that maybe need to go back somewhere? Because you've got some documents in here that appear to be government stamped. Why are they still here? I mean, someone would have cleaned out, you know, the office. Someone, because apparently hasn't been there in four years. And there's stuff there. So th the number of people that could have given a good comment to the president is, is significant. There's probably a dozen or more people that had direct knowledge that could have said, hey, maybe we should call somebody to get these things picked up, number one. But number two, look at where this is coming from. This is coming from, I mean, Omar was on a talk show. Uh, and she brought it up, and the talk I show saw, host yeah. tried to go with the talking point and defend Biden. And she goes, "No, no, no! This is a significant thing. I think it's. I think there's opportunist, friendly fire coming in that doesn't want Biden to be the candidate." You know, you know, it's crazy uh, for me. The same thing with Harry when I said, "Why would you write a book trashing your family?" And years later, you're going to have this backfire on Great you, and parallel. your kids are going to write something about you. When you do this to the opposing side, you're going to see months after what they did to Trump, first time ever for that to happen to Trump, it happens to you now, uh, uh, it backfires. Now, Garland has to keep the same standards or else he's seen as what? He's seen as they're targeting a candidate to eliminate a candidate, which that's definitely not going to be a good look going into 2024. But wouldn't you think they would be saying, hey, nothing to see here, nothing to see here, Merrick, just chill nothing to see here that's usually that's usually the playbook but they they're have. not yeah but they're not look at the look at the democrats that are out there that said merrick garland has no choice and they were saying this before merrick garland says hey i'm thinking about it it's been going on it's been going on for a week you know it, that the number of people is is escalating so you just ask yourself a question why are so many friends of biden or should me why are so many people that are on the team, that Democrat team, why are they coming out and saying Adam. this? Yeah, I think um, one thing, uh, if you go back and revisit that interview that Biden did with, uh, I think it was 60 Minutes at the time, he's like, how could you be this irresponsible? And that just kind of keep playing in my head. It's like, all right, Joe, do you want to answer that exact same question to yourself there, Chief? So um, we'll see what happens here. I mean, one thing I, I will say is that whether it's Trump, whether it's Biden, I don't think anyone's going to have any legal Please, ramifications from this. What, is it the video playing right now? You know, the, Trump has the, the he's able to kind of duck and cover under the fact that he was president at the time. Biden is the current president, I know, although this did happen as VP. But I think Tom brings up a good point. Democrats are looking for a soft landing to be like, Joe, thanks for your service, buddy. You know, the, the whole reason, the whole premise of why Joe Biden became elected president, whether you agree with him or disagree with him, was the fact that he at least was had a, a decent moral compass, 
Hey, he's just, he's, you know, good old Joe. That's he wouldn't how it do was anything sold. wrong. We don't know that, but that's Correct. how it was that's sold. Yes. Exactly. Marketability. Right. He's not Trump. Basically, he's the anti Trump. He's been right. in Washington forever. He's a good guy. You can sure. trust Joe. But slowly but surely, you know, the, 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 the larger the lens, the deeper the lens of being in the Oval Office, you realize, what's all this stuff with Ukraine going on? What's this Hunter Biden laptop thing going on? What are all these things that you actually did that you're accusing Trump of? Uh-oh, not so fast here. So I think Tom is right there. there I think there is a, a sort of a loud and proud faction at this point. Since they got through midterms, it wasn't a red wave. They're, they're like, hey, Uncle Joe, thanks so much for everything. You got the orange man out of there. You did a great job. You're going to be a one-term president just like Jimmy Carter. <sniffs> Time to hit the road. P.S. You're 80, 95 years old at this point mentally. Thanks for your service. You know, let's move on to 2024. So, so you know, you know, if this happens. So here's a question: uh, Who who will be the first female president? If there was a bet in Las Vegas, which I don't know if there is or not, let's search it to see if there is. Oh, I'm sure. Who will be the first female president? Do you think it's going to be a a meaning a Kamala Harris, oh. where he gets ousted before finishing his term? Or you think they're going to let him finish his term before Kamala becoming well, the... Even if they try to impeach him. Let's just go down. Let's go down yeah. that road. Because the, you, you said this is going to be the year of investigations. Sure. <laughs> we started off the year with investigations. Voila. Uh, keep in mind, the, the Dems own the Senate. So even if the House tries to impeach him like they did with uh, Trump multiple times, Ukraine, this, that, the other, Russia... The Senate is not going to vote to impeach Biden. That's not going to happen. Or it's not going to, the House might raise it, but uh, the Senate's not going to pass it. And so, I think it's 60. 60 yeah, 63 or 60, some number like that. Yeah, percent. They're you're not going to get it. Senate. Out of 100, not even 50, you're saying. No, no, it's not 60. 50. No. Correct. Yeah. No, Correct. When you, um, when you put a Supreme Court judge on, I think it's 51%. I think it's sixty percent of the Senate has to yeah. vote for the impeachment. So back to your original question. I, God forbid, it, we see any, you know, barring anything out of nowhere. I don't see Kamala Harris. What, what, what's president. more, what's more likely to happen? Let me just ask this question: Is it more likely for him to resign? Is it more likely for him to finish his term? Okay, and then say, "Yeah, I'm not going to run. I'm going to step aside," or is it more likely for him to? continuous term and run for 2024 what is more likely out of those three things i think the least likely of those three things is him to step aside and just Re like resign yeah i don't okay. see him resign this isn't a resignable offense agree um so you agree with me thanks um i don't know i think it's too early to tell it wasn't a joke i think it's too early to tell whether he's going to run for 2024 or not he says he will but is this the type of incident that will pierce the armor so much to the fact that he won't even want to run. I doubt it. Once you've been in politics this long, it's very hard to be like, all right, Joe, just give it up, buddy. I, just, I think I think even on even on the uh, clearly on the right, they want Joe out of there. But even on the left, there's such a yearning for a younger, more attractive candidate. And uh, look, I'm no fan of Gavin Newsom, but he seems to be being groomed to be that next spot. So I, I don't I don't. Although, remember, Gavin Pelosi and Biden. Gavin got, Pelosi. Okay, got Gavin. Gavin and Pelosi yeah. and Biden got together, and then Gavin made public statements with Pelosi, and he said, I will not primary him. I will not run against Joe Biden. I'm not going to primary this president. And that was just, what, six weeks ago? And when has Gavin Newsom ever not lied? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, uh, gosh, you know what? Right. I, need, I need to rethink this. Yeah. Uh, but I think the least likely thing is that they pull the rug to the point that Kamala is president. I think that's the least likely thing. I agree. I think the most likely thing is you said pierce the veil. I, I think that's a good way to put it. There's a veil with a sitting president and you pierce the veil till somebody can get behind there and say, look, no politician has ever said I'm retiring from the, the highest office in the land. You are. Yeah, that was my next question. When once the what's the last time that an incumbent president did not actually run? Not win. I'm not saying that. When did they not run? I when's believe, the last time that happened? I believe it's Lyndon Johnson at the height of the Vietnam War, where he said, "I will not seek and I will not pursue my uh, party's nomination for president." So it was LBJ after he took over for after JFK yeah, after 68. he won to get a, a, a yeah a, because he served two terms at that point. Yeah, yeah. JFK's 
he served First term. Served one and a half. Right. Correct. He served the half. Then he was reelected in 64. And then 68, I believe it was LBJ that said, I will not seek and I will not pursue the nomination. Mm-hmm. It was a famous, uh, like almost trembling uh, speech yeah. he gave on, on television. Well, he looked bad. What do you think, Pat? Would you, you, as far as the question you asked about odds, Kamala running, female president, Biden, is that what you're kind of predicting? You know, they asked Draymond Green the other day, hey, uh, what do you think uh, uh, with your chance of being a Golden State Warrior long term? He says, no, it's inevitable. My days are numbered. He says, I'm only going to be here for you. He says, I understand the business of this game. He says, I understand there's business with the NBA, and my time is coming, and I'm probably going to be playing elsewhere. This doesn't mean I would like to be a career Mm -hmm. Golden State Warrior, but I don't think it's going to be happening. I think I'm going to be going to a different place and then – he explained the pool story. He says, one day I will tell the real story that nobody knows about. The only thing you guys know is me punching him. But anyway, so that's a different story. The writing's on the wall, right? Okay. You know, yesterday I watched Brady play. It's very hard to watch the game. It wasn't easy to watch the game. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, everybody was who was a Brady guy was rooting for a win. He did not look good. Don't get me wrong. If you didn't watch the game and you just go look at the stat sheet – you know, 39 for 57. I don't know the exact numbers. It could be 37 for 59, 352 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. It was not a good game. It was okay? embarrassing. It was not a good game. No. The extra point guy missing it four times, that, that was, was the bigger story because that's, you know, which Has was anyone ever done that, history. by the way? Since 1930, whenever the first season of the NFL was, 32 or 39, hasn't happened since then. But you watch and you're like, okay, is this guy going to come back? Is he going to come back or is he going to go take his $360 plus million dollar contract that he got and just go do TV, right? Because he, he going to come it. back next year, you mean? Is gotcha. he going to come back next year? I don't know if it's a good idea for him to come back. Who's he going to listen to? His wife definitely didn't work out, cost him his marriage. His best friends, I don't know. Uh, in the camp, he's got a lot of good people in the camp, but a guy like that, is someone can, can someone really tell him to stop? Yes. Now, to compare Brady and Joe Biden is like the worst uh, uh, example <laughs> to use on what you can do there. But there is timing to stepping away. And in the world of politics, whether you like this guy or don't like this guy, I don't agree with his policies. I don't think he's a leader. But if you're competing in the NBA, you're competing to win a what? Championship. And then if you're competing in the NBA, you're competing to win a championship. And in the finals, you become a what? Finals MVP, right? What is considered the finals MVP in politics? Being the, yeah, president. the president. He's become finals MVP. There's only 46 finals MVP in the uh, politics. He's one of them, okay? He's probably the worst finals MVP, maybe one of the worst finals MVP. Top 10 candidate. For yeah, sure. for worst finals MVP, right? But, but the moral of the story is, guess what? Out of 113 billion people who have ever lived in the world, out of 330 million people living in America today, you are one of 330 million people that became, you know, uh, one, no, you're four or five of whatever living right now that became one of the uh, finals MVP becoming a president. Someone needs to sit down and say, look, you need to step away. I would like it to not be through the manipulative games for this person to step away. Make sense? Because sometimes you think you're bigger than the game. You no longer take counsel from anybody. And Tom, the person we had lunch with yesterday was given a very, very, very interesting perspective. One of the most influential people in politics the last 50 years. I'm sure you would agree with that. Incredible. He yep. gave very good insight. Um, th- this, this whole thing right now is on one person. And you know who it is? Jill Biden. On Joe, Joe. It's all on her. She needs to kind of sit down <laughs> and say, her. babe. On it's Jill all on, Biden. It's on her, not okay, Joe. Gotcha. Jill. It's on Jill gotcha. to say, Joe, go announce immediately. You're not running in 2024, and you're stepping away, okay? Because the last way you want to – I guarantee you if he went out there and said that, 90% of these issues would go away. I'm telling you right now. I'm convinced if he was to go out there and say, I am not running in 2024, you would see very quickly this disappear and go away. And that's a better way to leave than, no, I'm going to run. They can't do nothing. No, they're going to keep finding shit on you. If you've been in politics for 48 years, you have so much dirt on you, and they got a list of it. I'm, I'm willing to believe there's somebody behind closed doors that they have one job. You know what their job is? They have a file on 1,800 people in politics ever, and every single dirt on them just waiting to see when to use that dirt. And they have a number eight dirt. They have a number four dirt, and they have a number one dirt. This is not Joe's top ten dirt. 
if they want to use us, number one, it will not be career ending. It will be legacy ending where the last name Biden, people will, the name Joe will go from being the most common name that kids give their names to Joe going under name drought for two decades, okay? If they pull up that number one thing. You're so, saying that there might be more hidden. There, there, there's not, there might be. There is more. Well, if, if I'm that convinced. that is the case, why didn't they use that already? Or why didn't they use They don't that need to use like it yet. The they don't need election. to use No, why didn't they, they use a lot of things on JFK? You know, they, why didn't they use a lot of things on the part of what, which Trump was the most annoying person for the left is because he didn't give a shit. Because he would own the dirt. Yeah, like you know how he's talking about, I ask him, I said, what's the worst label you can give somebody nowadays that's career ending? Yeah, racist. Guess what Trump says about the labels? I don't give a, give a shit. shit. Yeah. That's, that is power, though. That is power. Every one of these guys gives a shit. He does not give a shit. He doesn't sit there and say, you know, it's not, it's not going to be, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Oh, yeah, oh, well, how about you? How about this? How about Kirkett Hiller? How about that? The, the, the way he was a counterpuncher, he ruined politics. He ruined the, these people who had been game in politics for years. He ruined them, the swamp. This guy, Jill is in charge right now. Jill needs to make a decision to talk to her husband. And Joe needs to come out in the next two, four, eight weeks and say, hey, after long conversations with my wife, and after a visit with the doctor, the doctors ask me, it is not a good idea for me to go another four years. There are plenty of other great candidates in America like Newsom, like this. He needs to give that message written in the following way, looking down at a piece of paper where he is edifying and indirectly, you know, endorsing the next four, five, six, eight different candidates. And then he's going to say, I will do my part. This is the greatest honor of my life. I will finish this term, and we will support the next Democratic candidate to become the president. That's what I foresee happening. Let, Anyways, let it may have, not happen, but that's what let I Let me get your happening. opinion on something, Pat. So you're familiar with juxtaposition, right? Yeah. So like, so here's my question. If Trump runs again, obviously, which he's already declared, um, don't you think he's rooting for Biden to run against him? Meaning, that there's nothing, speaking of juxtaposition, the last thing that Trump wants is a young, fresh Gavin Newsom. Just like the last thing a Biden wants is a young, fresh Ron DeSantis. Like, what would be more alarming and shocking than 82-year-old uh, Joe Biden up on stage debating young, fresh, energetic Ron DeSantis? Polarity and duality and juxtaposition would be crazy. Same thing with even a Trump and... Um, our, our friend uh, Newsom, D like, don't the two of them kind of want each I, other? I have my thoughts, but I'll, I'll let Tom address it. I don't think Joe Biden would want that. I don't think Donald Trump would care because if you're a winner and you believe in yourself, you're like, whoever gets in the ring, I'm coming. And I think that is what you see in Donald Trump. Le le but Donald Trump hasn't won anything since 2016, Tom. <clears throat> Yeah, but, but 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 here's a question for you. Here, here, here's a question. When Brady lost the Super Bowl to Philly, did he stop being a winner? He didn't win for seven, eight years. He, you know the longest drought Brady had because under Wes Welker, Wes played with him for seven years. They never won a Super Bowl ever. Really? Wes never, Wes never. Wes Welker never won a Super Bowl. You know what the Belichick called Wes Welker one time in the conversation with him? Mm -hmm. You know who Wally Pip is? Wally Pip was at the time the greatest New York Yankees first baseman. And then he missed one game one time because of a headache. You know who replaced him Don for two thousand two hundred games? Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig. Okay. Lou. So, anyways, so 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 meaning uh, Wes Wes Welker was replaced by Edelman, and it was game over. It's a very epic scene. Everybody has to see when Belichick pulls up to uh, 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 what's his name uh, and says, "Hey, do you know who Wally Pip is?" No, he says, "You may want to look up a Wally Pip is." Wally Pip missed a game one time. Lou Gehrig took it over, and he says, "It looks like we just had a Wally Pip moment right now." He <laughs> whispers it to. Wes Welker, but going back to it, I want you to think about this. Think about the three most painful events you had in your life. You don't need to say publicly, just think about it, okay? How quickly did you recover from it? That's the question, okay? Think about the most painful, humiliating moment of your life and how quickly you recovered from it. Now, if you're emotionally there and you're thinking about that moment, the day they're raiding Mar-a-Lago, Trump is golfing. <laughs> I, I want you to actually think about this. So imagine you get a call. Hey, uh, Mr. Mr. Sosnick, they're raiding uh, your place. Yeah, okay, who, what do you mean? 
All right, call the lawyer. Call this, call that. Okay, all right, four. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Once again, actually emotionally go there. The average person, when that happens, cancel the game. I got to go. He's like, nah, let's finish the game. He loves golf. It's not about he loves golf. This isn't about he loves golf. You could love basketball. You could be playing mm-hmm. a pickup game. You know, he could be playing badminton, right? You're saying he's unfazed? It, 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 could be, it could be anything. It, it, it's the fact that... The average person overreacts, and he just moves on, and he plays his game. And there isn't any game that you're going to play worse in than golf because it's small little stress levels. The ball's going to travel one way or another. This is why, you know, guys who are dealing with the kind of personal issues they were dealing with in winning tournaments, you, you sit there and you're like, how the hell can you do that at the levels that you do? So the point to your question is I don't care he I don't think he cares who he faces. I think he want, thinks he can beat anybody. I didn't tell you he's going to. I said that's mm-hmm. his mindset. Mm-hmm. He thinks he can beat anybody. He thinks he is the guy to beat. And uh to to be to be even a little bit more specific about it, he thinks somebody else has his job right now that doesn't deserve to have his job. In his mind that's what he thinks. He thinks this is his job. He has to finish this term. And they took that four years away from him to make America great again. Whether the populace believes that or not, that's what he thinks. That's what I'm convinced he thinks. Um, When you meet people like that, it takes very few people to understand who that person is. One of the greatest quotes of all time that I have in my one of my vision boards. If a lion could speak, the world could not understand him. You, You can't understand the lion. The average person is impossible to understand the line. It's not possible to understand why would Jordan be the way he was? Why would a guy who is constantly wanting to win and wants that to be the way? Why is Brady? Why is Brady still playing? Can you imagine this year he goes through a divorce? Right after his divorce, he goes on a 3-1 streak. What would the average person do that goes through a divorce? Uh, uh, Tom Brady is taking uh, time off for personal reasons. The average player would do that. Didn't happen with Brady. And he finished the season. Love him or hate him. This is probably the most dramatic year in his personal life. Not career, you know, deflate gate, all this other stuff. Personal life. The guy finished the season. I don't care if he had a bad ending. The guy finished the season. There, there, are, there are people like that, and Trump's in that camp, that he likes these types of things. He doesn't hide from it. And I know it's not a lot of, what a lot of people want to say because right now what's most popular is you know, trashing, trashing, trashing. By the way, the other part with this whole thing that's going on right now with Biden and Trump, they're trying to eliminate two people, okay? So if you eliminate two, take these two out. Take Tom, take Biden and Trump out of the equation. Who becomes president? You have probably... Let's just- play this game. So again, take Bi- eliminate Biden and Trump. Who's president? Well, the most likely two in terms of um, current playing field would be Newsom and DeSantis. However, if people keep forgetting about Michelle Obama. Okay, so now let me get the other one. Take Biden out, leave Trump in, who becomes president? Let me ask the question one more time. Take Biden out. Trump is able to run. They don't do anything to Trump. But Biden is saying he's not going to run. Who becomes president? Oh, I, I think Trump would beat Newsom, but he would not beat Michelle Obama. Okay. So let's take Trump out. I have to kind of handicap it. Let's take Trump out. Obama, Biden runs. Trump is not running. Who becomes president? DeSantis. DeSantis. Wow. Like that. Yes. I think there's just such a yearning in this country for if you're 75 and older, thank you for your service. Wow. Peace out. Okay. I think there's such a yearning, whether you're on the left, you're on the right. I. There's such a, a a major advocacy on the left and on especially on the right to get Biden the hell out of there, and the same rules apply to Trump, and that's why I think there's this like Gavin Newsom has done nothing in his career. He's ruining California. Why the hell is he at the top of this list to run for the Democratic nominee? It's because he looks the part, and they're just grooming someone to take the place of Biden. Uh, for all we know about DeSantis, he's done a way better job than Gavin Newsom. But there's such a yearning in the, in the country to be like, that's the new guy. 
and whether Trump wants to step out of the way or not remains to be seen. But I'll always revisit that people want these 75 octogenarians out of there. Well, and DeSantis has his flaws. I'm saying if Biden is pushed or he pushes and he's the candidate and DeSantis you know, gets the nomination, I think DeSantis can beat Biden. But DeSantis himself is not a perfect candidate. Decided DeSantis would mop the floor with Joe Biden. Mop the floor. And sadly but true, I think Gavin Newsom would actually beat Donald Trump. Oh, Gavin Newsom beats Donald Trump. I think so. Yes. When you go to Miami this weekend, go with security. Okay, I'll do my you best. You just said that because yeah. if, if, again, if I'm not a fan of you, I'm not a fan of you. of Newsom in the least. Yeah. I just know how these these have you seen democratic two, operations work. Have you seen a couple months ago when Michelle Obama had a hard time endorsing Joe Biden? Yeah, a lot of people have had that. But problem. did you see that or no? What? what I didn't see that. You haven't seen it. So no. if you if you talk, go to YouTube. And just yeah. type in Michelle Obama by, she, on Biden. Just type in Michelle Obama on Biden. It's a short. Yeah, she was kind of cornered by the question and how she kind of uh, threw it was kind of. Uh, no, no. Just go to YouTube. Just go on YouTube. Yeah. And then just type in Michelle Obama on Biden. It's, it's 16 seconds. Michelle Obama on Biden. He's hard to defend. It's like stumbles. Yeah, the first one right there. Watch that and press the audio so everybody can hear. One time. You hope that President Biden will run again in 2024? You know, I, 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 I will have to see. I mean, even Joe's <laughs> old friend Michelle. <laughs> How many eyes you, was that? By the six, way, like, do, you, you know what? I think do, I heard a giggity do, in there. Do, you know, gig, what, giggity do you know what's my biggest thing with that? <laughs> I mean, Michelle Obama, your husband was a two-term president. You've been in politics your entire life pretty much. You mean to tell me your publicist didn't give you a list of possible questions they're going to ask for you to answer the way you did? That's the number one question. Oh, you mean, what do you ask. think they're going to ask you? Hey, you think, yeah, I, 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 just, By the way, I think, I think that You need to have a canned reel. Well, you know, I've known Joe for a long yeah. time. He was a great uh, vice president. I think I he's think doing I a great s- job. I look forward to endorsing him. You have a canned response. Your canned response should not be, ah, oh, get, get I it. I think oh, he's done I, great for this country. Right. I think he's done this. What he's if, done his best. Yeah. I think that was a canned response. Yikes. Pat, can I just, circling back to our, we our got guest. got 30 what? seconds. Circling back yes. to our guest, Dennis Prager. There's something about him that's just very unique. He's a very calm presence. By the way, I think he's very good for you. You think I, so? I, <laughs> okay. If you, if you knew his background, yeah. he is, you're more him than you know. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, well, meaning, gonna, mean, not in a way. Well, I'm not talking. I'm not sitting here saying you're as well read and as wise, and you were the guy at 14 years old that you were going to fight <laughs> evil. I didn't say that. I just think there is yeah. a lot you can pick up from this guy. This would I be agree. a person that if you're gonna if you're gonna study anybody's content, this guy would be one of the guys to add to your list to study. This. I agree. Well, I've been studying Dennis for years, I, 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 and I thank you for putting me uh, me and Dennis Prager. I was thinking Dennis Prager. <laughs> yeah. Don't get too cocky, man. Kidding. I meant it in a I'm different kidding. way. Yeah. But my question to you is, what is it about him that resonates with you so I, much? Listen, for me, you have to know a great conversation to me is what porn is to a 16 year old kid. To a two boy, uh, that's what it is. I, I just love great I conversations. I just went there in my head right there. Yeah. Pat. Okay. To me, when whenever I'm having a very high, high, high level conversation, I'm having a great time. There's nothing like there's something yeah. very unique about a very good conversation, and you have that every single time with Dennis Prager. Anyways, gang, I'm on the road this week. We're traveling all over the place. He'll be doing stuff. I got nothing going on. I'll be on the road, road again. I think, uh, 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 Rob, are we doing podcast next week or no? We are. Is it two times next week or just once next week? I believe next Tuesday we have Brett Weinstein, and then Thursday we have a home team podcast with Mike Baker. Oh, really? Nice. Brett, Brett Weinstein's going to be on? Yes, next Tuesday. That's right. right. So that's the date. Fantastic. Yeah, we've been talking, he and I, so I'm looking forward to that. Anyways, gang, have a great week a great weekend and we'll do this again next tuesday take care everybody bye bye bye